the last few months been like just kind of getting getting back into this organization and from but from a leadership standpoint well more than exciting you know i don't look at it as an organization i've said this a million times but this is the family um from the the guys in the clubhouse the coaching staff the the athletic department the university the community it, it's been unbelievable i mean i i knew what this environment was like uh having been here but you know this is Again, it was just a reminder how truly remarkable Corvallis and this baseball family is. So it's been it's been great getting after it, watching these guys grow tremendously each and every day. Uh, their work ethic and how tight they bond together is special. What changed or what surprised you the most about maybe like when you got here compared to like you know maybe like oh the stadium is bigger oh the the supports I mean is there anything kind of like that that surprised you when you came back years later? I don't think so because I lived right around the corner. I had a house here. My my dad lived down here. My aunt and uncle and I came back several times in the off season. Um, had a great relationship, you know, with with all the coaches and would pick their brain and I just loved being down here as well. So. Um, I would say, as as new as I am, I guess, uh, I'm, I don't really feel new at all. You know, this has always been a huge part of my life. Were there any jitters? No. Excitement? <laughs> and, you know, I just focus on being the best I can at each and every day, but reality is, I mean, the people that, that I'm surrounded with and um, my family have been extremely supportive and this is this is opportunity. There's no there's no threat to it. It's a it's a challenge and a great opportunity. What's maybe been the biggest adjustment for you coming back from the pro level to the college level? Anything that kind of you're like, oh, I have to do this a little bit more now, or do this a little bit differently? Anything like that? Uh, I, I don't I don't think there's uh, a ton of things that are providing big change. I was fortunate in the Mariners organization to um, focus primarily on people and process, and I don't feel like that's any different now. You know, we, we still focus on uh, character and being a great student and also being an, a, a strong athlete. So keeping those three things in mind, everything we do, and, and we've already defined what our, our key pillars are here to success, and we hold each other accountable to them. And the biggest one is being selfless, and that's something that um, I've been preaching as part of the Mariners organization, same thing here. You know, everyone has a few different things going on throughout their schedule, um, and now, you know, the the scope of things is a little bit wider than, than coaching at an affiliate. But I feel like the the history I had um, managing uh, two companies back up in Washington and also doing professional baseball is all kind of combined it, uh, into one great opportunity. What have you seen from your guys this off season about with just the work they put in wanting to give everything this season? It's very clear what they want to do, and their their expectations of their performance is extremely high. But we know that how we practice um, builds trust and confidence in one another. So we challenge um, ourselves and the guy next to us to to really get better and look at those failures uh, uh, on a daily basis, on a pitch to pitch basis, as opportunity to build strength. We know that we have a, a strong schedule and that's what we want every year is to go out and play the the other best programs out there um, so that we can grow. And you know you step in and watch any of the practice um, times that we're together and you can see the guys are inquisitive and even the coaches having a strong growth mindset is very important to us. So every day showing up to the office early in the morning, to us it's it's joy. Everyone comes in very excited. And we know the players as they're showing up to the field as well. They love this time together. And we have fun, but fun is also uh, working our tails off and trying to accomplish something that you know only one person gets to do a year. You mentioned no expectations. And you can see what they are here. When you came in, or maybe before you guys get started here, uh, or it was before fall ball. Did you set expectations? Did you even mention expectations, or is it, does it go unsaid? Part of this program is it's it's you know we have the same vision every year of what we're here to accomplish, but that happens by getting the best out of ourselves and growing, which is you know a tribute to what Coach Case and all the other alumni that have come through here. And, uh, 
coaches and players alike. And <clears throat> the atmosphere here when you're playing a game too is extremely special. I think everyone that gave me a hard time sitting behind home plate when I was here helped me transform into uh, the man I am today and I'm grateful for that. But this sitting down right out the gate, it was, well, the first thing we did was we went uh, camping, get to know each other. Um, and for us as coaches was to spend some time, step back and really understand um, who these young men are, what changes they've made rather than trying to overcoach, really observe and um, build that trust so that they can go out and compete free and clear in the mind. Um, and also when we have something to say, you know, we make sure that it's the right person get, delivering the message, the right timing for it as well. Um, but sitting down early on, it was very clear. And, and they, they have a lot of leadership in that clubhouse, you know, identifying what they want and how they're going to get it. Yeah, so you would, wouldn't be shocked if these guys are breathing baseball 24 hours a day, although we push them really hard to be great in the classroom and exceptional human beings around the community. They do that as well, but you know, you see them up in, up in the hitting facility or running around working with each other. Since us as coaches only have limited amount of time that we get to spend with them on the field, um, they do a great job picking up and making sure that they're all pushing each other throughout the day. And that was the same, you know, when I was here, I'm sure it was the same way before I was here um, and everywhere in between. People love being here. You see a lot of uh, former players that are playing professionally come back and they're, they're working out together. There's something about this environment that makes you want to do something special. How, how would you describe your coaching style? What, what do you like around these players? Myself. I don't, know. I, I, I don't try to be anything I'm not. Um, that advice was given to me um, many times over. You know, Coach Casey, when I first started coaching, um, he expressed a few things that, that really helped me out. I basically talked to everyone that I respected as, as a uh, former coach of mine and gave them the hard Q&A and, you know, trying to information seek as much as possible. But, you know, I, I'm very competitive. I'm, I also, well, my wife has helped me become um, compassionate and patient. I guess that's what kids will do for you too having a couple little ones and um, just trying to um, really be a good listener to the coaches and the players rather than jumping to it. I know, you know as, as a player I was quite fiery and um, I would always be the one to kind of lay in the guys and let them know how I really felt. I think I've started to find balance but still got a long way to go and fortunately I have a great coaching staff that um, communicates really well with me and helps me better myself each and every day. Um, and that's accountability is probably one of our biggest things as well. Um, rather than letting stuff slide by, we're trying to help each other become the best versions of ourselves, and we got to do that together. Can you touch, a little more, touch base just a little bit on the, the analytics part of uh, what you brought to the table, and kind of just explain to Beaver fans what that's going to maybe look like. On the analytics side, I don't, I don't know if the much of our fan base is going to see much of what's happening with it. Uh, data collection is important. It helps the student athlete uh, understand what their strengths are, you know, so it builds confidence as well, and also what opportunities they have, maybe how the opposition is going to uh, attack them in the box or uh, on the mound, and you know, collecting these numbers just it helps create buy-in. It's not that we. Um, are showing it to our players each and every day. That's why we have an analytics squad that um, puts together the information and shares it with coaches. This is also another way that we can uh, do a better job with our advanced reports when we're scouting other other programs as we're getting ready to play. Um, so I was very fortunate, had a lot of um, intelligent people, uh, very sharing people in the Mariners organization that uh, helped me out a ton here. And like I said, we have a coaching staff that has a huge growth mindset and uh, Brad Brown has put together a great group for our analytics squad and these guys are constantly trying to learn pushing each other in there and trying to put data out for us coaches to understand how can we help players um, you know what we're doing our, our work in the cage or on the field but 
tons of data collection and then you really have to be able to communicate it the right way otherwise it can become noise and you know noise can deter you from um, staying the course and achieving your goals.